Uh, well, the morning after, the proverbial morning after. Um, I don't, I don't really use this this uh, channel lately, um, but I wanted to weigh in on what just happened last night, and and I didn't want to just write it because um, I don't think people will read it. <laughs> um, I wanted to, I wanted to t be able to say it to you. Um, so the last several months, my my Twitter, my my social media has sadly turned into this this joyless humorless crusade against Trump and I have tried to make the best clearest most compelling argument I can against his presidency and it's not about it's not about him playing for the other team it's not that his policies are too conservative I didn't say any of these things about McCain or Romney or Bush um, this election is qualitatively different it's it's as a point of contrast, if the Democrats had nominated Charlie Sheen or Kanye West, and the only alternative to that was Ted Cruz, whom I loathe, it, my vote has to go to Ted Cruz. And, it, and it's not, I can't even protest by not voting. I have to vote for Ted Cruz in order to stop Charlie Sheen from having the nuclear code. So this is, this is not about um, partisanism. It's it's about who Trump is. We, we just elected a man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through the list with you. I'm sorry, but before I move on, I want to cover this. We, we just elected a man who has zero experience in governance whatsoever, who is an ignoramus on every topic relevant to the presidency, who lies and lies and lies, and not just like for political expediency or self-preservation a la Clinton, but who lies constantly and pathologically and vindictively and verifiably. A man who has told us up front, in front of God and everyone, that he intends to commit war crimes, that he intends to make enemies of our closest allies, who wants to see more nuclear weapons in the world, not fewer. He tells us that he admires authoritarian dictators and and he admires them because of their authoritarianism. Uh, he tells us that he will use his power as president to change libel laws so that he can more easily sue people who criticize him when he's president. Uh, this is a man who incites his followers to violence, who brags about committing sex crimes, who proposes banning an entire religion from the country, which advertises a total disregard for our constitution. A man who, who refused to say he would concede the election in the case that he didn't win. A man who has no self-control, uh, poor judgment, who bullies and insults and punches down and yet can't handle criticism. A man who is, by any objective standard, not psychologically stable enough to have the nuclear codes. A man who, yeah, I'm still going. Uh, a man who has a history of making money by screwing over the little guy, discriminating against minorities, refusing to pay small businesses for their work, and then threatening to bury them in legal fees if they try to do anything about it. A man whose charitable foundation is actually just a slush fund that he uses to pay his lawyers and buy himself paintings. A man whose university swindled hundreds and hundreds of people out of their life savings by falsely advertising to them, and who is currently the defendant in three class action lawsuits for committing fraud, lawsuits which will persist well into his presidency. And, and the list goes on and on and on. But he won. He didn't win the popular vote. Clinton won that. But he dominated the electoral map, fair and square, and as flaw as the system is that allowed his ascension, he will be our president. He will be my president. Welcome to America. So yeah, it goes without saying that I'm, I'm worried. I'm really, really worried. I'm worried for myself. I'm worried for my wife and her reproductive rights. I'm worried for my son and his future. I'm worried for the planet. I'm worried for family members of mine who are sick, uh, who will likely lose their health insurance. 
Um, I'm worried that I will lose those family members as a result. I'm worried for all the people that I don't know and have never met who are likely to be far more affected by a Trump presidency than I am. Um, but this is the part <laughs> this is the part where I sit back and I say, okay, you won. Let's see what you got. Because uh, Trump made a lot of promises. He said unequivocally, I will make America great again. I alone can fix it. I will bring the jobs back. I will crush ISIS. These are these are big claims and they are seductive claims. It's easy to see why so many people would be comforted by this. Um, but now is the time to prove it. So I guess this is this is me. I'm, I'm addressing the people who voted uh, for Trump, the people who support him, because I want to make sure that you and I are on the same page here about what exactly went down last night. You have the president. You therefore have the Supreme Court. You have the House. You have the Senate. You have all three branches of government. You have all the power. So make no mistake, the next four years, or at least the next two, is a science experiment. We get to answer the question of what happens when your party, when your team, gets to do what they want to do, when they get to build the country that they envision. But like they say, with great power comes great responsibility. And as part of this uh, science experiment we're conducting right now, we, we get to create a circumstance where we can now control for and rule out all the ways for you to make excuses and shift the blame. You have no excuse anymore. So if in four years Trump hasn't made America great again, or if in two years we aren't on our way to being great again, if Trump hasn't brought all the jobs back and he alone didn't fix it and he didn't crush ISIS, well, we have to take inventory, don't we? That tells us something. It tells us that you lost the argument, that your ideology doesn't work, that your team is ineffective, that your solutions failed. But there's two sides to that coin, right? Because if, if in four years or two years, Trump has made America great again and we're all doing swell and he brought the jobs back and he alone fixed it and he crushed ISIS, well then I, I'm gonna have to take some inventory of my own. I will owe you some self-reflection. I'll owe you an account of where my reasoning along this path failed. Um, and I'm willing to do that. I, I will have to change my mind about certain things. But I hope that you are willing to make this bet with me. Uh, and I hope that you are willing to do some self-reflecting of your own if it turns out in the near future that you were terribly, terribly naive, like I think you are. But in the meantime, I owe Trump my support insofar as I can give it. Uh, because I want this country to do well, even if it means doing well under his ideology and his plan. It's, doing well is doing well. Um, and so all I can do is hope for the best. But I will not forget that I made this video. And one way or another in the future, I will be revisiting it and I may be forcing you to revisit it with me. So this conversation this global societal conversation is not over. Uh, until then, good luck, America.